Oh no, I've been asked to build something wonky on purpose. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Yes, we're going to build something a little wonky that looks a little bit like this. I was asked if I could make one of these and I thought, yes, of course we can. And then I thought, hang on a minute, that means that's lots of different angles, that's measuring, that's maths, that's complicated, that's going to be. And I thought, whoa, hang on a minute, stop, 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 stop. Instead of trying to think of all the plan and the full design and figure out all those angles and maths and things, why don't we just wing it? So the first thing I guess is what material am I going to use? Well, I've got some offcuts of plywood, which will work quite nicely. I've also bought a little sheet of copper. Um, so that's going to be for the roof. So kind of all the dimensions of whatever we're going to make here uh, is determined by this to make sure that the roof, this sheet that I've got is going to fit. So that's one of the first considerations to make is what size of material have you got? Now, I know lots of you will be worried about using plywood outside. And yes, if you just put plywood outside, it's going to delaminate as it gets wet, it's going to rot. But that would happen to any wood, whatever it is you use. If you just made this out of pine, it would do exactly the same thing. It would rot and go soft and horrible. Uh, realistically, you're only going to be able to get away with things like oak or iroko or something like that, things they build ships out of. But even then, that's still going to need coating with something. So by the time we finish this project, it's going to be fully painted and decorated. It's going to have the metal roof uh, to protect it from the top. And then we'll probably cover it in some kind of uh, film at the end as well. Either an outdoor varnish or a really good cheap standby. It's just good old cheap PVA glue. Coat it in that, it seals it brilliantly. So try not to worry about using plywood outside. It is still a usable substance. So first off, how big is our sheet of copper? Well, that is just shy of 12 inches, 30 centimeters. So that is the maximum width of my roof. So I'm going to have the width of that as the apex. So if I've got 12 inches there, I want about an inch of overhang on each end as it goes down the sides of the roof, which means I've got 10 inches to play with. I'm not going to make a joke at that point. So if I've got 10 inches for the full span of the gable end, if we want to use a technical term. Um, then let's say to make it one key, we could have one side of it as four and a half inches, the other side of it as five and a half inches. I'm just going to cut that off. There you go, four and a half inches there. And then, and you see, I'm not even measuring angles. I'm going to go down a bit. Five and a half inches is to there. That's what my roof's going to look like. So shorter on that side, longer on that side. The bottom of there is lower than the bottom of there. Instantly, we've got something wonky. Hurrah! Then we're going to go in some kind of angle. What's going to look good? Uh, something like that. Like that down there. And I'm going to make that point out a little bit more. So let's go like that. That is definitely a wonky house. Now what I might do is make the opposite side the same angles, but shorter, only by a little bit, so that the slope of the roof isn't flat. Again, it's gonna curve down, and that should be a relatively simple thing to figure out. Okay, let's cut this one out. Handsaw or bandsaw, doesn't make the slightest bit of difference, just use whatever you've got. Did you know you could use a hand plane on plywood? Works beautifully. Right, so now like we said, we're gonna cut out this top section. Well, that's handy, isn't it? That's one cut already done, huzzah. Uh, now just to do that now we said we're going to make this a little bit shorter this second one so i'm just going to push that down there a bit that much maybe a bit more without going daft i think that much will do that's about an inch shorter on that inch um i really am completely making this up as i'm going along 
Um, this isn't just for the camera. I haven't got this sussed before we've set off. I am absolutely winging this. And you know what? I'm rather enjoying it. Okay, so we now have two of these. We have, they are identically topped, but a bit shorter. So that's gonna do that, which means the top's gonna slope. Uh, right, what I think I'm gonna do is have the base of this with each of these running at 90 degrees to each other at this bottom corner. Because I think if I start splaying them out that way and lean them out, that's, that's a third angle for each join. And that's probably more than my brain can take at the moment. So I'm gonna keep the, the bottom section square. They can lean out. So the next one is to make these sides. Interesting. Let's have a think. Thinky, 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 thinky. Okay, so how are we gonna figure out the angles for these side sections? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's just lean one up at that angle. Uh, and then we we'll, can hold that one at that angle. Hopefully they'll just be different. They should be, because it's ra completely random. And then holding that up there. And as predicted, if we keep this bottom section square, these joints will work. Hurrah. No, it's gotta be down the back, hasn't it? That, and like that. And we'll say the top is off there and there. And now I'm gonna cut two of those out and see where that leaves us. Now, while the other me's cutting those sections out, I wanna to talk to you about my new book. It's called Be A Self-Taught Woodworker. So if you wanna do projects like this and you just wanna wing it, and you wanna have tools in your arsenal for building whatever you want, this might just be the book for you. I'll leave a link in the description or you can simply search on Amazon, Be A Self-Taught Woodworker. Get yourself a copy, get in your shed, and go and explore what you can learn for yourself. So in practice, does this actually work? Well, let's see. Um, we've got these sections here that should fit. Yep, pretty much. Wah, it's a good job I've got big hands. Right, there we go. Put that on there. Ah, oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. Right, that actually works. Would you Adam and believe it, that actually worked. So I think probably in one of these gable ends, I'll cut a door out again, probably slightly wonky. Um, I might glue the door back in, possibly, at, a, at an open angle, mm, maybe. I'm gonna start gluing this together. Making sure they're matched, yes they are. Now we mentioned earlier about which type of wood you could use outside and we said pretty much everything um, glue is a little bit different make sure the wood glue that you use is suitable for outdoor use because some wood glues aren't um, if it says they are then they are we'll go with it uh, but some wood glues are not suitable for outdoor use and not great at getting wet um, if they're a bit too water based things go off Right, so that's set, hooray. Right, so now we need to glue this one on. We have a clamp on that side and a bit of a clamp at this opposite corner. Whether that's a cut isn't perfectly straight or the boards could be fractionally warped. Doesn't matter. Once that glue's set, that'll be fixed in place forevermore. Beautiful. Well, that is definitely a wonky building. Funny from every angle. So even though that the opposite sides are the same, you don't actually see that as you go around. The next thing for me is just to sort the tops out. So you can see there's a few places where this has happened. Uh, on that side, this edge needs running flat so it matches this angle. Now, there's a few different ways that we can do that. We could do it with the hand plane. Uh, and in some angles, the hand plane will re work really well. Um, in others, it's gonna get in the way as it kind of gets blocked and balked by other sides. 
so here's a tool that I really like it's one of these it's called the finger sander I'm not a massive fan of power sanders generally because they're dead noisy really dusty and in a small workshop not particularly nice but there's something about a finger sander where it reaches places other tools can't get to right so let's get this metal off here and this is um, about a millimeter thick maybe 0.8 so it's quite sturdy it's got some it's got a beautiful wobble isn't it oh well i could do that all day um but i won't so we need to kind of put this on here let's see what we've got bit of an overlap there rotate that over the apex so let's have to there and something like that to there <clears throat> so what that's going to do is this spare section here uh, I want, always wanted to have a spare section so I could either circle it or cube it or do something with it to turn it into a little wonky chimney yes right okay so to cut this out well you can do it anywhere you want again the let's put a thing on this I like hand tools okay lots of people like power tools it honestly doesn't matter in the slightest use whatever you've got use what you like to do you could do this with a handsaw cutting this out you could do this with a great big angle grinder if that's what you've got i think i'm going to reach for my trusty dremel with a cutting disc on and just whip through it that way around always get your money's worth out of a disc Uh, this is our section yes we're going to need to find out where the apex is going so we can bend this in the right place but before then it's just too perfectly clean and flat so straight away we can see uh, it starts to put that rough edge on but you can see how this corner here is already peeling upwards so we'll go all the way along flip it over do the same on the other side uh, just to make sure it stays flat right so now that we've beaten seven shades out of it uh, we can try and line this up again just kind of going from side to side on that apex and i'm just feeling i'm not going to measure it i'm just feeling underneath the overlap on this side to the overlap on this side with these fingers until it feels something like level because we're going for wonky it doesn't have to be perfect so i'm going to say something like that now that means that the apex needs to be just there. One dent there. And one dent there. Right, so that's there and there. Just do it the old fashioned way. Right, let's go. Ooh, lovely. Right, there we go. So we've tidied up all the corners around there. They're looking okay. I'm going to paint this now. Now, what paint am I going to use? Well, it depends what I've got in stock. So let's have a look. There is my stock shelf. This is a, a masonry paint weather shield we like that um and it's a kind of cornish creamy color which is what i was after in the first place so i've got a couple of cans of this more than enough so we'll slosh this all over and once things have been painted thoroughly with this stuff i can then go in and put some detail in and i'm going to use something like a brown felt tip for wooden edges and window frames and things like that um Again, it doesn't matter what you use. A lot of people will frown on using felt tips. Well, why? If that's the colour you want and it works well, use it. Um, so that's the next thing. Kind of decorate it, really. Then we'll attach the roof. Um, oh, and there's the chimney to make. And possibly a front door. Still haven't made my mind up whether I'm going to do that or not.
So with the colouring in done, uh, it's given it a slightly cartoony edge, which I think works really well with this wonky thing. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do now is put a window on here. So I've got some of the copper sheet in. It's got a slightly silvery side on the other side of it. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to edge that with some cinnamon sticks. This was a fantastic idea by Mrs. KBC. I want to build a chimney. So now we've made this uh, very haphazard looking chimney. Uh, I need to stick that on there somehow. This is not an advert for Stab Bond, by the way. Uh, but it is good stuff. A little bit of that on there. And I'm going to put that on like that. Right, so it's time to give this thing some kind of a finished coat. Now, because I've used paint and felt tips and a few other different bits and bobs on there, what I don't want to do is brush on anything because they might mix in and start making things look a bit messy. So I'm going to go with a spray can uh, and do light coats. That way everything should stay in place. Um, I am by no means a spray can expert at all. It's just basically open my workshop doors, um, make sure it's well ventilated, try and get out the way, don't breathe the stuff in, it's nasty. Uh, work off the instructions from the can really. So with this all sprayed and protected now, it's time to put this on some kind of a base. I would recommend, again, any kind of wood will do, but I would really recommend having um, a very shiny surface because this is gonna sit this way on, it's more likely for water to sit. This, water's only ever gonna run down this and disappear, it's fine. But if anything where the water's gonna sit, it could seep in. With this being super wonky actually, just thinking, um, I might even attach the base on here um, so that it sits slightly uneven, so the water would instantly drain off. I think that's a bit of a genius idea, I'll write that one down. Now, the base material I have comes from this. No idea what the wood is, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's got a very shiny finish to it. Uh, so I'm gonna dismantle this and then we'll find out how to attach this to this. I'm not gonna use glue for this occasion. We'll screw it in, but I'm gonna add an extra couple of bits inside. So one flat base, that's gonna sit on there somehow. Uh, now, I don't just wanna go screwing through this base into this thickness of plywood, especially as it's on an angle, it's gonna be nasty, there's gonna be screws showing, it's gonna be all kinds of wrong. So we need to thicken up this base section. Now all I've got here is a chunk of just in square timber. I'm gonna hold that in there. I'm gonna press it up against the slope so it reveals a gap underneath. All I'm gonna do is stick a ruler down here and measure that gap at the bottom, which you can see is about eight mil, something like that. So then I'm gonna draw an eight mil high line all the way across and slope it from that pencil line to that corner. And then we have the correct angle on here that will stick onto the side and flat on the base, giving us a much larger screwing area. And I'm gonna do that for these three sides. So this should go in, sits flush on the floor, butts up against there. Oh, lovely. Now I dare say this is where winging it's had its little limitations because we only kind of thought about this as the problem arises. Yes, it would have been better 
if these three pieces had have been screwed into the sides of the wall itself. If we'd have been able to put screws into this side to go into there without poking out the other side would have been the best option but it's not the only option. So we can glue these to the sides of the house, which we're gonna do. And because of the way that it's angled, as you then screw down into the base, it's actually gonna be pulling the sides down as well because they're still angled. So this is all gonna work still rather nicely. Yes, there's a better option, but we weren't planning that far ahead. This is the joys of winging it. So with the base attached, now all we need to do is fit the lid. Now I've thought of a number of different ways we could do this. I did originally in my head think about using some brass pins to kind of nail this on, but there's not enough overlap. And because of the bends and the angles, it would pin things in. I don't think it would look very attractive. So I'm just going to go down the very simple um, ultra bond grab anything stuff, varying makes around. <laughs> and there we have one wonky fairy house i'm really rather liking that it's uh, it's cute isn't it it's absolutely fine to head into the shed knowing that you want to make something but how to do it maybe doesn't need all that much planning yes there was a few instances through here where that planning ahead could have been more beneficial but never mind we got there in the end and it's still solid it's still going to last the time it still looks really good. The customer that ordered this um, is in the process of moving house and we're not too sure yet how this is going to get erected onto something. Is it gonna stand on a pole like a freestanding birdhouse? Is it gonna be on a post that gets concreted into the floor? Or I think more likely it's going to be wedged into a tree, in which case I will be cutting out little semicircular sections of this base to fit in between some branches and then using probably some of the legs of that trestle table that this came off uh, to brace it into the tree so it doesn't fall down. I think that would look really, really cool. All those options and more are available to you. Use your little noggin, figure out where you want it to go and how you're going to do that. If you like this project, go and check out this playlist. I know you'll absolutely love it and get a copy of my book, Be a Self-Taught Woodworker on Amazon. God bless.